An electron and a proton have the same de Broglie wavelength. Okay, uh, this is the electron. We have the electron, uh, electron. Just put mass of electron, and this is a proton. And uh, remember, remember this. Uh, the difference between photon and proton. Many students uh, mix up these two. Uh. Pro uh, photon is the light, lah. Okay. Photon is the light particle, yeah, the light particle. Proton is the positive charge, okay. Photon is the light particle. Uh, uh, proton is the the positive charge and uh, the, the the positive charge. Okay, uh, so two different thing, yeah. Photon, photon and proton. Difference by one alphabet only, the H and the R. Uh, so be careful, ah. Uh. This is photon. This is proton. So the question is proton, not photon. So this is a mass of proton, proton, um, and they have the same de Broglie wavelength. So they have the same wavelength, uh, same wavelength. So I can put uh, lambda e equal to lambda p, and uh, the wavelength of electron equal to wavelength of proton. Now, which which one has a greater kinetic energy? Explain. Uh, which one has a greater kinetic energy? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, kinetic energy formula is e, uh, k equal to half mv square kinetic energy formula. Okay. And then uh, for de Broglie wavelength formula, de Broglie wavelength formula is lambda equal to h over mv, uh, h over mv, or lambda equal to h over p. P is called the momentum. Uh, yeah, I just want to write it down. This one is the momentum or mass time velocity. Okay. Uh, which one has a greater kinetic energy? Explain. So to explain this, I need to I need some calculation. Yeah? Normally for explanation, I need some calculation. But if you look at question B, it now the question B asks you to calculate the ratio of electrons kinetic energy to the kinetic energy of proton. So, if we find out the ratio of this kinetic energy between electron and proton, I should be able to explain which one has the higher kinetic energy once I have this ratio. Uh, so, this question, actually they should ask question B first before they ask question A. Actually, that should be the way. Actually, you should uh, ask question B. Uh, B should question be the question A. A should be the question B. Uh, you you should find out the ratio first. Uh, once you know the ratio be, of kinetic energy between electron and proton, then it is obvious which one has higher kinetic energy. Easy for you to explain why, isn't it? By explain by calculation by value. Uh, so I do question B first. Okay, or I treat the question A like question B. I treat the question A like question B. So um. Uh, okay, I just put the answer in question A. So now, uh, I have this, uh, for kinetic energy formula is half mv squared. The uh, de Broglie wavelength formula is h equal to mv or h over momentum. Okay, so uh, what I can see here is, he say they have the same wavelength. They have the same wavelength. If they have, uh, look at this formula, lambda equal to h over momentum. If they have the same wavelength, electron and proton have the same wavelength. Look at this formula. I want you to pay attention to this formula. Ah, if the electron and proton have the same wavelength, means they will have the same momentum. H is a constant. H is a Planck constant. If a wavelength, what I can say is the if the wavelength of electron equal to wavelength of proton. Then what I can say is uh, the momentum of electron will be equal to momentum of proton, isn't it? Uh, or I can say like this. Uh, I can um, uh, I can make it like this. Uh, make it this way. Um, uh, since they have the same electron, uh, this formula can be changed to uh, lambda over electron over lambda of proton is equal to one because they have the same value, isn't it? Uh, so so now, if I use this formula, if I use this uh, de Broglie formula, lambda equal to h over p, 
Uh, so I can make it, um, uh, I can divide, uh, I can make, uh, yeah, again, uh, lambda, lambda is uh, inversely proportional to momentum, isn't it? Uh, yeah, lambda is inversely proportional to momentum because h is a constant, h is a constant. So, um, okay, so, uh, all right, look at this one, ah. Huh? So, lambda equals to h over p, momentum. So, lambda is inversely proportional to momentum. Okay. So, what I can say is, I can make like this. Uh, lambda electron uh, over lambda of proton is equal to, uh, if, uh, because lambda and momentum, they are inversely proportional, inversely proportional, if lambda electron at the top, momentum electron need to be below. Ah, isn't it? And then, lambda proton at the bottom, lambda proton at the bottom, so momentum proton need to be at the top. Uh, one, one at the top, one must be at the bottom, one at the bottom, one must be at the top, because they are inversely proportional. Uh, inversely proportional. So, it is uh, like this way lah, like this way. You see that? Yeah, this way, yeah. One at the top, one at the bottom. If another one at the bottom, if another one at the bottom, uh, then the other one must be at the top. Okay, so now, uh, since lambda electron and lambda proton, they are equal, so the ratio is equal to 1. Uh, when equal, equal to 1, the ratio, isn't it? Uh, so what I can say is, from here it is obvious, lambda e electron over lambda proton is 1. Uh, so this is equal to 1. So what I can say, the momentum for proton and momentum for electron ratio, the ratio also equal to 1, which means they are equal, which means their momentum, they are equal. Ah, they are equal. <laughs> okay? Now, uh, <coughs> I got this uh, ratio, uh, this one already. This is very helpful. I keep this. I keep this in my pocket. Now, talk about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy uh, if you want to look into the uh, half mv square, uh, it's it, uh, a bit harder because we don't we didn't find the velocity. We more concentrate on momentum. Uh, so uh, we already know about the momentum. So why not we change this formula half mv square into the form of momentum? Uh, I did tell you about this before. How to change half mv square to momentum square over 2m uh, in previous video. Yeah, please check out the previous video how I change half mv square to momentum square over 2m. So it is easy for me to convert uh, yeah, convert this formula to the momentum for momentum because I want to relate more easily between you see I want to relate I want to relate kinetic energy to the wavelength, isn't it? Uh, it is easier if we have a bridge between them. Uh, the to con to connect kinetic energy to wavelength, it is easy if we have a uh, momentum in between. Uh, if we use the momentum, this one, ah, momentum here. Ah, understand not? That's why that's why a uh, half mv square. I change to momentum square over two m. Easy for me to relate kinetic energy to lambda later on. Easy, okay? Ah, uh, because if we use the velocity, if we use a the velocity, then you will confront with another, another. Uh, what you say? Another variable, which is the mass. You see, you have the mass here. Ah, uh, which you later on will have three variable. You have to consider about. Um, lambda versus uh, lambda versus mass versus velocity. Then you need to consider uh, lambda uh, kinetic energy versus mass versus velocity. So there are three variable. You understand? Three variable. So better if I consider only between uh, lambda with uh, versus momentum and kinetic energy versus the momentum. Ah, I only consider two variable. Is easy then I consider three variable at once. I don't know you understand what I'm talking about, but um, you will understand if you do these questions. Okay. It's so it's easy for me to use the formula momentum squared over two m. Uh, two m. Understand? 
Ah, uh, yeah, because this one is uh lambda with momentum only. Ah, uh, yeah. Instead, you no need to use the mv anymore. You just use lambda with momentum. Okay. So, ah, uh, okay. Let's look back to this question. So I already have uh I change this half mv squared into momentum squared over two m. Okay. So now uh I already have uh uh. Okay. So what I can say is um. Momentum of electron uh, and momentum of electron and momentum of proton they are equal. They are equal, isn't it? Uh, they have the same momentum. Okay, they have the same momentum. Electron and proton have the same momentum. So, uh, so for this formula, for this formula, uh, the momentum is a constant. Uh, so from here, I can see momentum is a constant. Okay, momentum is a constant. Uh, so uh, this momentum is out of the equation. Uh, so it's only the difference is between the mass, uh, mass of electron and mass of proton. Because the what I can say is the lambda is constant, the momentum, uh, the momentum also constant. Uh, the momentum, momentum of uh, electron is equal to momentum of proton. So. Uh, the momentum is a constant, so the diff the variable is only the kinetic energy and the mass. Uh, only two variable. So what I can say is um, kinetic energy is inversely proportional to the mass. Ah, uh, to the mass because you are using two different atom. You are using electron and using proton, so you have two different mass. Ah, uh, you have two different mass. So uh, the mass is a variable. Uh, so no need to think about the momentum anymore. Okay. Uh, so now, um, so you have uh, two. You have electron and proton. And so how to build this equation? Very easy. So um, if elect, yeah, let's start with electron. Let's start with electrons, and uh, then with to get then with proton. Okay. Uh, and since uh, the 2 also gone. The 2 also is a constant. You understand? The 2 also a constant. So it's also gone. Because why gone? Because it's already been cancelled out. It's already been cancelled out. Uh, so now, I start with electron kinetic energy, then with kinetic energy of the proton. So if the electron kinetic energy at the top, then my mass, must, mass of electron must be at the bottom because they are inversely proportional. Uh, mass of electron need to be at the bottom. Okay? And then kinetic energy of proton at the bottom. So mass of proton and will be at the top. Ah. Okay. Uh, if one at the top, one must be at the bottom. So electron at the at the top, mass of electron must be at the bottom. Kinetic energy of the proton at the bottom, mass of proton must be at the top. Uh, okay. So um ah, so the so uh the question asks us to find the ratio of electrons kinetic energy. To the kinetic energy of proton. So yeah, yeah. Just change it this to question B. Uh, this question A. Yeah, question A. So uh, we want uh, this ratio of what? Ratio of um, ratio of e ratio of electron kinetic to proton. Uh, that means we start with. Uh, we want the kinetic energy of electron first over kinetic energy of the proton. Uh, so which is this one? I already got this one. Kinetic energy of electron over proton, uh, which is equal to mass of proton over mass of electron. So this mass of proton electron you can find in the list of constant. Uh, yeah, which is if I refer to the list of constant, I got this value. Okay, I got this value. Um, let me find it out. Uh. Uh, what is the mass? Uh? What is the mass? Uh, let me find out what is this question again. Um, what is the mass of uh, proton? Okay, mass of proton is uh, 1.67. Uh, mass of proton is 1.67 exponent uh, negative 27 uh, exponent negative 27 and the mass of electron is um, 9.11 exponent negative 31 uh, exponent negative 31 so what's the answer what's the kinetic energy 
it is a 1833.15 wow wow so which one is bigger which one has a greater kinetic energy uh, so if you look at this ratio yeah if you look at this ratio uh, the um, uh, look at this ratio the kinetic energy of electron over kinetic energy of proton yeah? let's look at question a uh, is 1833.15 which means kinetic energy of electron is 1833.15 times the kinetic energy of proton so what i can say the kinetic energy of electron is bigger much bigger compared to kinetic energy of proton okay uh, or the other way to reason this the other way to reason this is also uh, by just looking at the the formula kinetic energy of electron with proton is actually mass of proton over mass of electron uh, so mass of proton we know that the mass of proton mass of proton if we don't calculate we don't calculate we can reason from this mass of proton the proton is much bigger mass compared to electron the mass of proton is much bigger mass than mass of electron uh, okay so that's why the kinetic energy of electron must be bigger than proton uh, understand because uh what i can say is the mass of proton yeah? look at this this formula mass of proton if mass of proton electron mass of proton is much bigger than uh, just write it here uh, yeah mass of proton is much bigger than mass of electron isn't it so this one is actually more than one uh, more than one so what i can say is uh, uh, from here kinetic energy of electron is actually more than one also uh, if this ratio more than one uh, this ratio also more than one which is um, kinetic energy of electron more than kinetic energy of proton uh, that's a, again the same conclusion just by just looking by just uh, thinking without calculation the mass of proton is much bigger than mass of electron uh, so the ratio of mass of proton over electron must be bigger than one so the ratio of kinetic energy electron over proton which is the same as this ratio this uh, ratio must be also bigger than 1 which means the kinetic energy of electron must be bigger than kinetic energy of proton uh, if I calculate I got it kinetic energy of electron is actually 1000 almost 2000 times bigger than kinetic energy of the proton uh, okay that's the answer okay so okay hope you understand okay and uh, let's move on to the next questions